All right, much like in English, the subject of a, me, a mathematical sentence, a formula, uh, is usually the variable that sits on its own on the left hand side. So if you're looking for the circumference, c equals uh, 2 pi r, and c is what we're, we're solving for. So that's the subject of the formula. A variable in a formula can be evaluated by substituting numbers for all the other variables. So we can work out what the answer would be given what all the other variables are. And uh, I love this musical word comes into it. If we want to transpose a formula, that will make another variable into the subject. So if we uh, we didn't know the radius and we were trying to solve for the radius, we can actually reorganize or transpose this formula so that one of the other variables can be the subject. Uh, to do this, you use I'll show you, you use similar steps to solving an equation since these variables are just numbers, they're just code for numbers. And noting that the square root of a squared is a, if a is greater than or equal to zero, but that the square root of a squared plus b squared is not simply not equal to a plus b, provided a or b is not zero. And we have an example of using that down here. Substitute the given values. We should be pretty good at this. We want to find what s is when we know that a is 3 and r is negative 4. So we're going to keep our, our equal signs lined up. I'm going to substitute 3 in the place of a, and I'm going to substitute 1 minus 0 0.4 which will give us zero, 3 over, sorry, uh, 0 0.6 is what's left. And then I work that out, and I've evaluated that the answer to 3 divided by 0 0.6 is 5. So s is equal to 5. Here, I have my formula. I love rewriting my formulas. m times v squared. So here we have 1 half of 4 and 5 squared. So another step, I could just go ahead and take half of 4, but I want to show you. So I've worked out that 5 squared is 25. So I, you, could be, you could do these in any order. So 4 times 25 is 100, half of which is 50. Personally, I would do 1 half of 4 is 2 times 5 is 25. Right now, we're going to do some substitutions here to find the area of a tra trapezium is given here, but... We're not going to transpose it. We're just going to find out what the answer is. The area is 1 half of a plus b times the height. And so if I plug in what I know, I actually know the area is 12. I keep my 1 half. Do I have an a? I do. So it'll be whatever a is, which is 5, plus I don't know what b is, so we're going to figure that out. But we do know that um, h is 4. Now. Um, one way to look at, at this is these are all multiplied together. And when you multiply something together by one half, you'll end up with the two on the bottom. You'll end up dividing by two, in which case it's really easy to see that two and two both go into this and you'll have two times that. But you really can just look. If you have one half here, you can cancel that right away because you've got four over one and you end up with a 2 here. So 12 will be equal to 5 plus b, which we don't know yet, times 2. And you'd be tempted to write that the other way around, and that's, that's probably a good idea. So in any case, we're going to divide both sides by 2 to get 5 plus b, divide by 2, divide by 2, and that gets 6 equals 5 plus b. So you can probably work it out from there that what you need b to be is 1. In fact, I'm going to write it in the right order. I'm just going to swap them around, because remember, I can put... 6 is equal to whatever's on the other side of that, if this, if this is true, so I'm just going to swap them around. Transpose each of the following to make b the subject. So the subject is going to be on the left-hand side. I'm starting with c, which is our current subject, is equal to a times whatever x plus b will equal. So we're just going to transpose, we're going to rearrange things. There's a couple different ways to do it, and if you look in the textbook, there's, a, there's another option of, of what you can get as an answer, which is also correct. We're going to do this way, which makes the most sense to me. If I divide, divide both sides by a, that'll leave me with x plus b on this side, and over here, if I divide by a, I can the best I can do is c over a. And now if I want to get b by itself, what am I going to do? I'm going to take away, do the opposite of what's happening to, to be here, an x was added to it. I'm going to take an x away from it. And that will give me c, I've really made it scrunchy, c over a, whatever that is, minus x will give me b. So therefore, writing it more prettily, putting my subject on the left, 
c divided by a take away x. Same thing, still equal, but I've just got them transposed so that I've got a new subject. Now this one might look scary with the squares and square roots, but remember the square root is the opposite of squaring. It is significant that you've got b is greater than zero. This just means that whatever it is, whatever your outcome is, you know it's going to be a, a positive a positive answer. Uh, so here is c is equal to, to the square root. If there's no number there. It's a, it's a square root and not, not any other power. Let's say plus b. So to get rid of that square root sign, I'll just square them. I'll square a squared plus b squared. So I've taken that square root by squaring both sides. So the square root of a plus a squared plus b squared, if I square that, I come back to just a squared plus b squared. Okay, stay with me. And I want to get b, right? So let's take away a from both sides, and that gives me c squared minus a squared equals b squared. And now, you're like, I'm, I'm at b squared. Uh, if I were to take the square root of b squared, I would end up with b. And I'm, remember, this is an equation. I'm just going to hop them over here. I'm just going to hop. I'm going to do a hop. And then, logically, the square root of what I've got written there is going to be equal to b itself. Amen. Hallelujah.